is John with Chest Freezer Cold Plunge, and today we're going to talk about a few different options to get tubes or wires inside of your chest freezer if you're using a more advanced setup. That would be something that, first of all, would have a temperature controller, second would be an ozone generator, and thirdly, there would be an internal circulation pump. The tubes and cables that we're talking about, the pump has got a power cord, the temperature sensor has a wire, and the ozone generator has a tube that outputs the ozone into the chest freezer. The solution that I've been mostly talking about is drilling a hole through the lid and then plugging that with PVC, stuffing insulation in between, drilling a small hole in between there. We've had people doing that for more than two years now and that's been working. The other option is for this power cord, it's, it's flat and you could drape it over the edge here. You know, it puts a little bit of a dent in the gasket on the lid. Same thing with the sensor for the temperature controller. You can just drip the, drape this right over the side. It will make an indention in the lid gasket. It's not too big of a deal, but some people don't like that. The first thing we're going to experiment with is drilling the hole through the trim here. And what's important to know about this is that anytime you drill holes into your chest freezer, if you hit a chiller line that's in there, you will kill your chest freezer. It can't be fixed. It needs to be replaced. So you always want to be careful about that. What's comfortable about drilling the holes through the trim is that during the manufacturing process, these walls are set up and installed and the chiller lines are always installed below the lines. How do I know that? because this trim is one of the very last things that's added during the manufacturing process. So I, I won't say that there's 100% chance that there's no chiller line here, but I can say with most certainty, like 99.9% .9 chance that there is not. And the other reason I can say that is because when you go to the parts stores to order replacement pieces, and this trim is one of them, um, they, they're inexpensive and it doesn't say anything in the instructions about having to watch out for the chiller lines. So let's go ahead and drill our first hole. Before you start, you want to do make sure that you do want to make sure that the trim is actually wider than your drill bit. If it's not, this is not going to be a good place to drill a hole. But if it is, you're 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 going to be okay. So let's make sure the bit is secure and the drill is going in the right direction. See, now what is happening here, you got to be careful about too, because you want to drill the hole straight through. And just because I'm trying to shoot video and do all this stuff, I'm not really paying careful attention. I'm not holding it with both hands. So you want to make sure the hole goes straight. So I'm going to start over. That bit of resistance that I hit on the out, on the the towards the end there is the outside wall. The outside wall is actually made of metal, it's not just plastic, so it very easily goes through this plastic and when it hits the metal there's going to be resistance. The reason you want to start here on the inside is because you can place that hole directly on the trim where you want it to be. If you try to do it on the outside it's going to be a little bit harder to measure. Now one of the things that you also want to be careful about in when you're drilling small holes to fit the tubes you see all this, uh, these edges in the metal and the plastic are going to be pretty rough and that's going to be hard on your tube. It might puncture the tube. So you either want to sand this down or you want to file it down or put something on there, drill a little bit bigger hole so you can put something in there to pad that tube or wire or cable to prevent it from being damaged. In this case, just for this sample, I'm going to just put the ozone tube in here just to show you what that looks like. The tube uh, was bent, or it's been coiled up, so it might take a little bit of finagling to get that thing to go through there. But there you go. So there's your, there's your ozone tube. Now, if you've got this in here, uh, this would be the one time where it's okay to use a little bit of silicone around that, since it's not going to be underwater or submerged. The only downside is that when this tube eventually wears out and needs to be replaced, you would have to undo that silicone and um, get it uh, you know, take, removed to remove the tube and replace it. But that may not be a big deal. So you want to make sure to seal around the inside once you get the tube where you want it, as well as on the outside here, and that prevents debris from getting in there. And it also keeps your chest freezer better insulated.
One risk that we have in doing this, or one potential concern, is that the lid may not close because I've already removed this lid, so it'll be a little tough to get it to sand in place. But what you can see is this internal trim here. When that comes down, it lands right or very close to where that tube is coming in on the trim. Now in this case, this lid, if you kind of look at it, you can see that there's a gap of about a half an inch back there between this inner molding that comes down and the outside of the top trim that's around the chest freezer. So in this case, that ozone tube and it seems to close, seems to uh, not prevent the lid from closing. What we're going to do is drill a hole only to break through the uh, front edge of the, the edge of the metal here on the outside and then we're going to put something very small maybe like a tiny screwdriver or maybe a wire and we're going to poke through to make sure that there's no condenser or evaporator coils in the way and then we're going to uh, try the router and I'm going to try a couple of different router bits and we'll find out uh, which one is going to be the best solution. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start with a larger hole and this is a quarter inch bit which is about the size that we're going to need for the uh, sensor. And again, you want to be really careful when you're drilling through because this outside wall is metal. The outside wall is quite a bit thicker and stronger than the inside wall. And so what you want to be careful about is that when you break through, you don't push and then accidentally go in and puncture something. So you want to have a really light touch while you're drilling. Okay, so see that I had a little bit of push in there and you want to avoid that. Now, in terms of uh, probing in to find out what's behind there, if you have a uh, wooden dowel, that would be great because the wood won't hurt or puncture anything if there's a, there's a line back there, but it will still go through the through any uh, insulation that's in there. See, we just kind of mark the distance. Where do we feel resistance to? Right in there. And then that actually is about the distance to the inside wall, the back of the inside wall. What we can do to confirm that is we're gonna get a screwdriver all right, which is bigger. We're just going to gently push through there until we feel resistance. And I can actually put my hand back here and I can feel that poking out against the wall. So we know that's safe. Now, what we don't know is what's down below this. You know, we can actually maybe get a smaller, uh, a skinnier screwdriver and just gently, carefully start poking down to make sure we're not feeling any resistance down there, which means that, uh, again, we're not hitting a chiller line and I'm not feeling anything like that. So what we're gonna do is get the drill and we're gonna go ahead and drill through that. Be careful about where your fingers are. And uh, you also wanna make sure to keep everything at right angles so you're not drilling a hole that's uh, going a weird direction. All right, so that came through just fine. Note of safety, anytime you're using a router or drill bit, you wanna use protective goggles and wear a mask. The debris that comes off of there, that stuff gets in your eye or if you inhale it, it's not good for your health. So use the safety protection equipment that is available for you. For the router option, I do wanna say that I've never tried this before. So this is the first time this will ever be seen. I'm not gonna explain how to use a router. If you are going to go that route, uh, you should already know how to do that. Um, the basics are that, well, one thing I'm going to say is that you do want to get a T-square or something else that you can use to guide the, um, the router so that it doesn't, you know, so that the line is straight. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start this up now. Um, I started out with a rounded bit. We're going to play with that and see what it looks like. And then after we get done with this, we'll go to the straight edge bit and see how that works. I'm using a 5 16 bit and I adjusted the depth of the bit so that it is just a little bit deeper than the width of the ozone tubing.
So all we're going to do here is just take a screwdriver and uh, scrape this stuff out, or see if we can scrape it out. I just happen to have a piece of sandpaper here. That I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper right now to start with. And then I don't have a finer piece of sandpaper with me and normally you want to follow that up with a another piece of sandpaper that's not as heavy of a grit to smooth it out. So this would be for the ozone tube. It's actually fairly smooth. Now it looks like you know where this this little piece of uh, indention that was there, or that molding that stuck up, it wasn't completely smooth all the way across. So that made a little bit of a hiccup in the router when it was going through, and that you know I've got some uh, an additional little piece sticking out there. I'd probably want to clean up. So you do want to make sure that's going to be a, a straight hole all the way through. All right, so now we're just going to run the ozone tube through there to see if it fits. So we're going to put this through here. wiggle it just a little bit. Small screwdriver to raise up the edge of that tube just a little bit. There we go. To coax it through there. Now, so once we have that tube through there, this is a pretty tight fit. So the cool thing about this is that uh, the ozone tube is completely flush with the top of this trim. So that when the lid goes on, uh, it's going to seal pretty well. So this might be another option to use a viable option to use for getting the tube through the chest freezer without risking drilling holes in the side where there's a potential risk for hitting a chiller line and killing your chest freezer. One thing that I can say that I do like about this option is that the router creates a, a smoother hole for the tube to go through than drilling does. That frayed metal on the outside, I think that's you, know, that you can still clean that up with a file or maybe some good sandpaper or some other tools, but uh, you do need to clean that up. That's sharp and it could damage your tube or wiring. All right, so now we're just gonna wrap the hole for the flat power cord and we're gonna see what that looks like. Again, you wanna use a T-square. If your hole isn't straight, it's gonna be really hard to get that cable through there correctly. So, and it's not gonna look so great. It didn't make nearly as much of a mess either with the, the foam that's in there. So we're gonna take this flat power cord. See, that fits through there perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. I've got, I've got a tiny bit of a, a hump here. I could have uh, maybe put that down by another 64th of an inch. But uh, anyway, this is just for, really just for showing you guys that uh, what the options are, how easy it is. And uh, if you've got the tools and the wherewithal to do that, uh, that's another option for getting the tubes, the lids, the cables into your chest freezer. What I like most about the straight edge bit as opposed to the round bit is how clean this is. That is just a very clean hole or channel. All right, the last experiment for today with the straight edge bit we're going to drill a channel that will fit the ozone tubing and we'll see how that compares to the rounded bit. Take the rough sandpaper to these edges, just smooth that out just a little bit. See, that's that's really nice. I actually, I think I preferred the straight bit to the rounded bit. In retrospect, one thing to note is that the rounded bit creates a groove that holds the tube in place all by itself. Whereas on the straight bit, you're going to have to do something else to secure that tube in place. Another thing I noticed about the power cord and looking at this more closely is that unless you do something to secure it in place, 
like to hold it down across the top. You might need to put, I don't know, something, a piece of tape up across that, a piece of duct tape, something um, to prevent it from coming up. Or the hole just might need to be drilled a little bit deeper. It, it would really be a good idea to put something, some kind of coating over this, whether it's just a little bit of uh, clear epoxy resin or some kind of protective uh, enamel finish um, that would just kind of protect the foam and keep it from flaking and getting all over everything and into your water every time you put a tube through there. So um, I'm not sure offhand what type of coating could be used that would work on the foam and on the plastic. Your local hardware store would have that answer, but anyway, that is something important to consider if you choose to do this.